Hello Captains, it's the Doctor. Welcome back to my Let's Play series, free-to-play character Rami Summers, tactical character. I just want to make a quick statement before we move on with this video today, which is going to be The Vault, by the way. Um, I want to thank first everybody for all the feedback you've given me in the last video and the previous one before that in helping me to figure out what skills to put in my skill points and ideas on how I can build energy credits and uh, different things and ways and all that to help build my character up. Uh, there's been a lot of concern, well some concern, I don't know a lot, but there's been some concern that I've possibly put some skill points into the wrong areas, uh, especially for doing the most damage as a tactical character and that sort of thing, and maybe some questionable um, questions about how I've built my ship based on uh, the weapons I put on or those type of things. I just want to clarify things just a little bit here and let you know my intention and play style for this, uh, for this playthrough going on. The very first reason that I'm doing this on a free-to-play character is I never have before. I've always played with a lifetime account, so I've always had those benefits on my other characters. I've had all the perks from that, and I've had a lot of Z-Store purchased items from that. So the reason that I'm playing on this free-to-play character now is, first of all, I want to experience the limitations that free-to-play players experience. I want to know what it is like playing this game by not having all those privileges. No gold member or lifetime privileges, no veteran privileges, and no Z-Store privileges. So I am learning that, and I am learning those limitations, and I'm finding out one of those limitations, if you don't grind a lot, is energy credits. But anyway, I want to find all that out, and so I don't want to do a whole bunch of extra stuff that I know I could do to build those things as I go along and play. My goal is to play all the missions from start to finish to end game and see where we are, see, how, see what free-to-play gets you. And the second part to all that is to show you guys that you can be successful in the game all the way to level 60 with all the missions, even the STFs after level 60, with what the game gives you, with free-to-play content and not having to do a whole bunch of extra stuff. I want to show you how you can be successful uh, in this realm of the game. And so that means just not doing a whole lot of extra stuff. I know that I can go off and grind patrols, uh, do a whole bunch of extra stuff to earn energy credits and earn dilithium and do all of that. And if I were going to play this game and not do this as a playthrough and make videos on it, I would probably do that. And that would be very smart. And I do recommend if you're playing this game for fun and not making videos for demonstration purposes, then by all means go do all the patrols, go do a whole bunch more things, grind, grind, grind away, sell everything, get a whole bunch of energy credits. I guess you max out at 10 million on free to play, but still get up to at least that. Um, and go do everything you can to better your character and get better gear at each rank. That is certainly possible and that is how I would play also. But the way I'm doing it now is just to show you that if you play the missions back to back and you just go through the game linear linearly without doing a whole bunch of extra stuff, that you can also still be successful in the game, that it's possible. You may not have everything that a veteran player or a lifetime player has, but you can still be successful in the game anyway. And that's kind of the point of this playthrough is that I want to show that. So yes, I know there's other ways I can go earn energy credits. I keep complaining about it a lot, but I guess it's just to show you those limitations because I want to experience them myself. The other thing is in the skill points. Um, Apparently, and I've been told this, that I'm not going to get a skill retrain token ever as a free-to-play player. That is alarming to me because that means you really do have to study and figure out where you want to put your skill points the very first time because if you're not ever allowed to change them, well, then you're screwed pretty much on wherever you put them for the first time. Um, some people have shown concern that I'm maybe not doing enough to promote uh, the DPS that I could be getting out of, a, out of a tactical player with an escort ship. That if I had put points, skill points, into different areas, I could possibly be doing more DPS. And I agree with you, that is probably true. 
the way that I'm building this character right now is mostly as a generalized character for fun. I'm not really building this character around the theme of being the most high DPS that I can be. I'm building this character just out of fun and I'm kind of I guess balancing things. I'm balancing, you know, structural integrity, the ship hit points, with shield hit points, with doing weapon damage, and all these different things. I'm I'm kind of balancing it all to build a generalized character that can do well in pretty much everything with an escort. Now, you could, of course, do things differently to promote certain things, like you could be more on defense, you could be more on offense. So it all depends on how you want to build it, and there's no right or wrong way. I want to stress that. Never a wrong or right way. There is your way, and there's the fun way, and that is your way. Have fun. If you're not having fun building your character, space and ground, skill points, all of that stuff, if you're not having fun with it, then there's no point in playing the game. This is a, this is a game. It's meant to entertain. It's meant to be fun. Don't get caught up in the DPS madness. Sure, doing more damage can help you but just have fun with it. So if you see me put some points into things that don't make a lot of sense to you, um, that's okay. And it makes sense to me for how I'm building this character. Uh, one thing uh, somebody told me to put things in, for example, is driver coil. Well, there's no point in that. Driver coil pretty much only helps you in gaining full impulse speed and sector space travel. It has a benefit also that when you disable your full impulse speed that all of your power systems come back to their normal power levels quicker but I can overcome that ability I can overcome that problem easily by using an EPS device so I've got of course this power transfer rate and as I get higher level power transfer rates those power numbers will come back to normal quicker with a better EPS console so I can overcome that by doing so what I mean is you don't necessarily have to put points into something because it does something sometimes you can overcome those issues and problems using different consoles or things on your ship to overcome those problems so something into a power transfer rate for example will cure that problem and now I don't need to waste points in driver coil I can use those points that matter elsewhere and yes, I am going to eventually go into like Starship Energy Weapon Specialization and that sort of thing. And here's the main reason. Read this. The skill improves your Starship's critical hit severity with all energy weapons such as beams. So this is something that will help as I do more critical hits have more critical damage, which is important on an escort. So there are certain things I'm going to be looking forward to going towards uh, on the skill trees here. Um, but just keep in mind that, um, you know, when someone does something one way, that doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. Feel free to go your way, you know. I just am doing it my way, and this is the way I feel. I'm not going to waste something in driver coil when I can put it somewhere else and use those points. So that's kind of that, and um, I hope you guys understand all of that as I move through with this playthrough. So now let's do the vault. Let's get down to it. This is a shuttle mission, and I am not particularly keen on shuttle missions, especially here as a free-to-play player. I am very curious what shuttle I am going to get because there is a Type 8 shuttle in this game, and it's not a very good shuttle. So I'm wondering what free shuttle we get as free-to-play. On my other character, which is a, a lifetime and veteran character, I have a, uh, a Yellowstone that I purchased from the Z store, so I use the Yellowstone shuttle for all my shuttle missions. Love the Yellowstone, great shuttle, but I don't think we're going to have that option as a free-to-play player, so I'm very curious what happens here with the vault. The Let's Romulans see. had a base known as the vault that they used for research into Borg technology. This facility was abandoned in the chaos after the destruction of the Romulan homeworld but intelligence suggests that the work there was far enough along that it was used to retrofit Nero's ship before it disappeared along with Ambassador Spock's vessel in the Hobus system. Long-range sensors have detected energy spikes in the Halcona system, and Starfleet Intelligence believes that someone is bringing the vault back online. We need to know who, and more importantly, we need to know if there is still Borg technology or restricted weaponry on that base. I need you to proceed immediately to the Hakona system and investigate the vault. Engage if you must, 
But I would prefer if you could gather the information we need without conflict. All right. So for this mission, we need to go speak with DeSoto, then go to the shipyard and board a shuttlecraft and fly to the Hakona system. You must use a shuttlecraft or fighter for this mission, such as a Type 8 shuttle, a runabout, or a Delta flyer. And what I fear is that it's the Type 8 shuttle we're going to get, which is the worst of them all. Uh, but let's find out. So we need to go to the Sierra system, a whole different system, and speak to DeSoto. Oh yes, i got to show you something else before we continue as well. Uh, I was talking in the last mission about wanting to get turrets for the rear of my ship to help me with forward firepower. That's what I wanted to focus on, was being better at forward firing and having forward fire power. I have done that. I now have two turrets in the back. These are phaser turrets, Mark 7, common. I was able to purchase these off the exchange. So what it had happened is it had been a couple of days since I recorded that last video. I came back into the game here and uh, checked it out. And lo and behold, um, there were a, some turrets that were now on the exchange for an affordable price. So I went ahead and bought them up. And that helps, that solves the problem that I had in the previous video where I wasn't doing enough forward damage and I was having a lot of problems there. These two turrets are gonna help me. So now when I fire forward, I have a dual heavy cannon and two dual cannons and then two turrets and then plus my torpedo all firing forward. So every weapon slot will be able to fire forward because the turrets are 360 degrees. So every weapon slot will be in use when I fire forward from this ship. That is what I wanted, that is awesome. That means I'll be getting the most damage I can from all my weapons. Now I still only have Mark I tactical phaser relay consoles. That's unfortunate. However, I cannot afford better ones at this point in time, but maybe in the future over time, I will slowly upgrade those tactical consoles. So that is what it is right now, no other option. But at least I got these turrets now, so this is good. Except now we're not going to get a chance to use them because this uh, mission is going to be in a shuttle. But I guess the next mission, the, the next video, we will see how that makes an impact. Okay, we are on our way. It's not too far. I'm not going to pause the video because it's not really that far away. Starbase 39 Sierra, we are traveling warp 8.33 in the Defiant. I will uh, see if there are any diplomatic assignments that I can add. There's one. Definitely uh, take that. Oh, here's another one now that we've crossed over to another sector. Excellent. So I got two diplomatic assignments going. Under R&D, I have two R&D projects going. You will see I am up to level three on beams, cannons, engineering, and ground weapons. So I have been uh, working on this slowly, but I am at level three in several of these now and uh, working, just working my way upwards, I guess. I have not crafted anything yet, um, but I suppose in the future um, I could look at the possibility of crafting something. I just haven't done it yet. I've just been kind of working on leveling up the crafting system at this point. Okay, here we are at the star base. We need to go see somebody called DeSoto. I guess he's going to give us our token for our shuttle. Yep, I cannot wait to see how this thing fires now that I've got those turrets. I should do more damage than I was doing before, which will be quite nice. Okay, we need to go to the Admiral's office here. Take turbo lift to Admiral's office. And uh, here we go. This is Lieutenant Commander Kyle DeSoto. 
In order to avoid drawing too much notice, you need to fly under the radar, so to speak. Admiral Tanay has authorized the requisition of a shuttlecraft. You can fulfill the requisition in the shipyard. Once you're ready, take the shuttlecraft out of the Hakona system. If you have a runabout, fighter, or other such craft available, feel free to use it, but do not approach the system in a starship. We want to avoid the notice of whoever's in the vault. A shuttle will also be able to dock with the vault and explore the exterior. Okay, is this a Section 31 operation? What? Oh, that mythical boogeyman organization? No, this is a standard Starfleet operation at the behest of Admiral Tenet and supported by Starfleet Intelligence. In case you were wondering, that means that you should observe all regulations and don't start a war. <laughs> I like how he ends with that. Don't start a war. Borg technology, Thaleron weapons, like the ones used by Shinzon, cloaking vines, and heavy graviton beams, we're not entirely sure. That's why we need eyes inside. The situation itself is near a micro nebula and surrounded by a tachyon detection grid. Even a cloaked ship wouldn't be able to sneak in there. You should also expect automated defensive like turrets and cannons. We haven't spotted any ships in the vicinity, fortunately, although with Romulan cloaking, anything's possible. And what if I need support? Starfleet will make sure to have a ship or two in range for a rapid response in case of emergency. Hopefully, though, you'll be able to keep things quiet and that won't be too necessary. Of course, missions rarely go as planned. Yeah, definitely. Very well. Remember, you must use a shuttlecraft, runabout, or a fighter, or a similar small operations craft to undertake the mission. We need on-site intel from the interior of the vault. Starfleet will not clear you to enter the Hakona system otherwise. Head to the shipyard and requisition a shuttlecraft. You can purchase a runabout for energy credits or purchase a Delta Flyer from the sea store instead of using a shuttle. So they give you those options. Accolade complete. Size doesn't matter. They give you those options in the sea store that you could buy a Delta Flyer for this mission. Of course, that Zen, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend Zen. That's not what I'm here for in this run through. So I guess our option is to either use energy, energy credits to buy a runabout. And I have 1,000 energy credits, so that ain't going to happen. So I guess we're just going to use whatever they can give us for free. It is what it is. I have no other options. That person just fell from the sky. It is what it is, and I have no other options. I guess I'm just going to have the crappiest shuttle ever. But <laughs> what you going to do? All right, speak with the shuttle information officer. I can provide information on shuttles and other small craft. Also, if you happen to lose your captain's yacht or commander's gig, let me know. <coughs> well, I was told to report to you. I can provide you with the necessary information on shuttles in general, so feel free to ask whenever you wish. When you're ready to actually select or claim a shuttle, you will need to speak with a ship and shuttle requisition officer. You must be in a shuttle or fighter when entering the vault system. Okay, picking the lot, go to a comma. Um, so it didn't... It didn't give me the shuttle, or it did give me the shuttle. Oh, shuttle requisition approved, but I need to actually go get in my shuttle. We'll go to uh, Ship Selections Officer. Where's my small craft? I guess it didn't give me the thing, or it did give me, but I actually have to go requisition it. Let's just take off everything but small craft. Here we go. Okay, um, here's our runabout. Danube class runabout. It costs 34,250 energy credits, and I don't have enough, so I cannot get a runabout, unfortunately. Um, a Type 8 shuttle. Ooh, I do have a requisition for this. So this is what I was talking about. This is the requisition I just got. So I can purchase the Type 8 shuttle. Captain's Yacht. It, I cannot. I don't have a shuttle requisition authorization for that. A Class F shuttle. Uh, the, oh, I need the original series bundle to get that. That's the original series shuttle. And then the rest of these are going to be Z-Store items. Here's the, Del here's the uh, 
Delta class shuttle, the Yellowstone, which I told you about, which is just an awesome shuttle. If you ever buy a Sea Store shuttle, I recommend the Yellowstone. Here's an attack fighter, and then the Cation thing, st uh, stalker thing. Okay, so it looks like the only thing we're going to be able to get is the Type 8 shuttle. The worst of them, but like I said, that's just the way it goes. A standard Starfleet vessel for short range missions. Thousands of Type 8 shuttlecrafts are assigned to starships and star bases throughout the Federation. It has no bridge officer station, so I'm going to have no bridge officer power, so that's awesome. Shuttlecraft items can only be used on small craft. Hull, uh, hull modifier, it's got a hull strength increase as you level. It's got a phaser bank <clears throat> with a 360 degree fire, a photon torpedo, and minus 10 power to shields? What? 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 I've never seen an actual stat where it shows a minus power. <laughs> this has a minus 10 power to shields. Well, that's stupid. Forward weapons are 2, no aft, base hull of 9600, shield modifier of 0.4, base crew of 3, base turn rate of 28. It's a standard shuttle. But that's what we have to get. This will be interesting. Okay, now we can get in our shuttle. Set active small craft. We have a phaser beam array standard issue S. That's 360 degree phaser beam. We've got a photon torpedo. We've got a deflector and impulse, a warp engine, and a shield. No aft weapons at all. Yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> well, let's just take it. I have no options. I have to use it for this mission. Kind of sucks there's no bridge officer stations. I mean, that means we don't have any bridge officer powers at all. Let's just double check that. Yeah, uh, stations. Oh, oh, here we go. Madison? Yeah, I guess if there were, here we go, shuttle. Yeah, look at that, nothing, nothing. Wow. Well, this is not going to go very well, <laughs> I, I believe. It is so small. I can either zo I can either zoom in one and have it like huge, or zoom out one and it's so tiny. Golly. Let me make sure I have all the powers I could possibly have on this ship. See what we can do here. Okay, abandon ship in case I need to abandon it for some reason. I do have fire on my mark, those are my tactical abilities. Got ramming speed of all things. Tactical initiative, that's not a lot. That's all I have, literally. That is all I have available to me. Let me make sure at least my weapons are on auto fire. There we go. So I can use attack pattern alpha. That will boost my damage at least, and my critical chance and severity, and my turn rate. And I do have attack initiative, and I do have fire on my mark. Those are my tactical abilities for my captain, so that makes sense. I can ram them, and I can blow up. I'll put it in attack mode because I know to expect some things here. And, um. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be interesting. Alright, let's go to the Hakona system. In my tiny little shuttle. Okay. Well, this, this is obviously going to take a long time. I'm only at warp 5, and this is way over here. So I will go ahead, as you can see, it's going to take a long time. I'm going to pause the video, and I will resume it when we get to the system. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Here we are at the Hakona system. That was a very excruciatingly long wait, so let's get this on. We are so small. 
Obviously, this station isn't as abandoned as Intel suspected. Sensors are reading several Riemann ships, and that's just the ones that we can spot. That station is immense. It must have taken an incredible amount of manpower and technology to build it. It's almost the size of a small moon. Sensors are reading a sophisticated tachyon detection network, as well as several patrolling vessels. For an abandoned station, this facility certain, certainly has a lot of activity. The Romulans are expert at stealth technology. If we want to approach unseen, we must avoid confrontation and find a way to evade or jam their sensor grid. We must assume that if we engage the ships here, they'll notify whoever is left on the station and it may become difficult to find an entry point. Avoid patrol vessels and evade sensor nets while approaching the vault. Consult, consult your officers for options. So we have some options here if you, based on your um, career type. The Remans are all over this system. If we start a fight with one of the ships, we'll probably have to fight them all. And there's no telling how many are cloaked here. We have a number of possible options to explore. Got the communication satellite, a derelict ship, a stellar debris, or a nebula. Okay, tell me about the satellite. All of the construction work out here must have required the use of a lot of worker shuttles and a communication booster for them. We might be able to dig up some information about the station's communication network if we find a subspace relay satellite. Tactical officers can examine the subspace booster satellite for intel. Well, I am tactical, so that would make sense. Derelict ship says science officers can examine that one. And then Stellar Breeze says this is for engineering officers. So this one totally depends on what you are. Tactical, science, or engineering. Um, Nebula will disrupt your shields and sensors, but might offer an alternative way to sneak in. So there's a Nebula we can go through as well. Let's do the, the tactical one. That's the satellite. Tactical officers can examine the subspace booster satellite for intel. Let's do that one because we are tactical and see if that helps us. Um, I don't know which way to go for the satellite. Oh, there we go. Derelict ship. Uh, there it is. Subspace relay booster or large asteroid. Well, let's go toward the relay booster. Let's try to avoid these um, ships here. We need to go around them, way around them. There's our satellite. Derelict ship is somewhere. There's a the derelict ship down there. But we want the satellite. Looks like the Romulans left this satellite as a communications booster for their short-range worker shuttles. Fortunately for us, it's still active. Unfortunately, it's heavily encrypted. Traffic analysis shows that the network routes its communications through a series of nodes at the station's dorsal peaks. If we flood them with excessive signal, it could cause the network to be un unable to handle the signal traffic, which would give us a brief window to slip in. The alerts wouldn't go off because the station would never get the signal. We'll still have to avoid the patrols and make sure we don't get too close to the station until we make the broadcast. Approach the vault and use a packet storm to disrupt the sensor communication. Okay, if you say so. Boy, a cloaking device sure would help right now. So there's the nebula, you could go in that way too. I've actually never gone in that way or tried that way, but I wanted to do the tactical option since we're a tactical officer. Now we need to be careful as we approach the station here because as you can see there is a grid and if you go past it um, bad things happen. Okay, let's do this packet storm. Okay, station's sensors are jammed. Can we go in? Yeah, we got uh, 50 seconds. I think we'll be alright. Yay, we're in. We are in. We are inside. We just need to find a way in now. Interstation. We made it. Picking up some unusual energy readings, we'll need to explore the accessible interior areas and see what we can find. Looks like there's another access conduit across from us. We'll have to think three-dimensionally in here. 
Since her readings are also picking up a few scattered life signs, search the vault interior for unusual readings. So we are now inside the vault, this massive area. Ooh, there's a shuttle. No response to our hails. Obviously someone is still living in this area though. Really? Kinda spooky. Look at this place, it's huge. Oh, I'm being fired on. Okay. Scan the doors. The doors are a massive set of interior bulkhead doors. They're segmenting the different parts of the base, possibly a safety measure in case something went wrong in one of the central areas. Access appears to be controlled by use of a security key. We can disable it if we can find a code block that matches part of the security key. Um, scan turret debris? Um, the code is 6750, okay, so 6750. Do I insert it when I find 6750 down there? I see that, but I assume we need to enter it when it matches or something. It went yellow for a second. Guess we'll just keep trying it. Till it lights up green or something. Oh, there's yellow, but that's not what I want. Or maybe it is. Oh, I guess I do, I do want it when it's yellow. Okay. Proceed deeper into the vaults. Indeed. I'm guessing we don't want to get hit by these electricity bolts. Let's fly down here. Scan EPS conduits. There's still power in most of the stations. Some of these conduits are damaged. Keep an eye out for energy discharges. Yeah, no kidding. Scan containers. Microgravity storage crates. No weapons or unusual energy signatures. Looks like whoever was at this launch bay decided to leave this fighter behind. What fighter? Oh, I see enemies around there. Looks like we got disruptors and tractor beams. Wonderful. Well, we're going to take this thing into battle. Ship is under attack. That wasn't too bad. Definitely, um, it takes a lot of damage. Oh man, my shields are gone. I'm 
these uh, things here are draining my shields. Four shields failing. Let's get out of here. Well, another big room. With a Borg sphere up there. We need to go scan it. Scan the Borg sphere. The Borg Sphere is dormant, like it's been put to sleep. It's not the source of the strange readings that long-range sensors detected. Looks like the sphere's hooked into part of the local system's network. We should be able to exit through the other doors now, probably a safety precaution to keep them locked. Great, they have a Borg Sphere in here. Just what everybody needs. Gotta find the door now. <laughs> there it is. More of this area, right? Warning. Ship is under attack. Four shields failing. Ah. What if I fly down this time? Can I avoid? Well, there's nothing now, so it doesn't matter. All right, quiet. Too quiet. Ah, ooh. Another big room. This one's white and purple. Pretty. Ah, here's what we're looking for. Thaleron reactor. Sir, that is it. This was a weapons lab, an industrial research and fabrication facility where the Romulans built Thaleron weapons. If the Remans have infiltrated this base, that must they must be trying to secure those weapons. Ah, so our intruder finally arrives at the heart of the matter. Yes, I do. Have you seen all that you came to see, little spy? Um, who are you? Does it really matter? Call me Obasek, if a name is that important to you. It is, Obasek. What are you doing here? That should be obvious. I intend to make use of this station to further my agenda. Your presence, however, is a bit more... curious. I expect that you are operating under the shroud of Empress Sela, whether you realize it or not. Um, I am not an agent of Empress Sela. I'm or I'm here to investigate unusual scanner readings from this station. Or neither of us is supposed to be here, I suspect. Oh, that's more clever. Rami Summers is clever. Never rely on the noble intentions of spies and thieves, Captain. And you and I are either one or the other. <laughs> I have a diplomacy option now. Since we are on similar footing, the least we can do is show courtesy. Or, my only intention is to determine what is, what is amiss in this station. I like the diplomacy answer. Let's do that, because Rami Summers is very, very clever. I appreciate your level-headedness in an unfortunate situation. As you must have surmised, though, I have already located the Thaleron weapons that I need. One of my ships has completed transporting them, and soon we shall make our first strike against the Romulans in our war for liberation. Sadly, we cannot trust any outside powers to ally with us. Our freedom must be won by our own hands. Okay, we've got... The Federation has always promoted freedom. While I cannot condone the use of Thaleron weapons, I can empathize with your plight. Or your position will be a procurious one, even if you win your freedom from the Romulans. I like the diplomacy option. Let's try it. Your honesty under pressure is refreshing. Lesser beings would be scheming to learn my plans or begging for mercy. Your intellect and discretion do you credit. Uh, see, that's Rami Summers. That is who she is. She is answering these questions correctly. All right. I cannot condone the use of Thalon weapons despite your justifications, or the use of Thalon weapons will have lasting repercussions. Yep, they will. I will deal with the future when it arrives. For me, there is no tomorrow until my people are free. However, I respect your commitment to your position. It's a shame we are at cross purposes. I am afraid our time is at an end. 
My associates have already finished loading the Thaleron weapons that we need, and I have other operations to manage. I think we both know what happens now. May your death be quick and valorous. I don't think so. So after all that nice conversation, he's gonna fire on me. Man, that accuracy is terrible. <laughs> Come on, accuracy, jeez. Okay, after all that, I guess I don't get any free items. I used to get like items here, like R&D items and stuff, uh, or uh, training manuals is what it was, technical manuals, but I guess you don't get those anymore, probably because they changed the way R&D works now. Um, you're probably wondering why I had those diplomatic options. I have, and I forgot to show you guys this, I have hit um, rank one on diplomatic now, so I did hit rank one finally. I think that was in the last one I recorded or something. So because I have hit that rank one diplomatic, I now have a couple of diplomatic options to me when those things arise. But to get more diplomatic options, I have to keep ranking up in the diplomatic thing. Warning. Ship is under attack. Okay, I've got to escape. Run for my life. Yep, I knew it. Target shields have failed. Accuracy on this beam is terrible. This uh, shuttle is very, very weak. Can't really take a lot of pounding. Shields on it go away really fast. Warning. Ship is under attack. Right shield's failing. Target shield has failed. Four shields failing. wanted to try to avoid this scanning thing because it drains your shields. Wonder if I can go above it. It looks like probably not. Warning. Ship nope. is under attack. I still ran into it. <laughs> okay. Ship is under attack. From what? Oh, from that. Four shields failing. Target shields have failed. Come on, scorpion fighter. There we go. As long as I'm fighting scorpion fighters, it's not too bad. Uh-oh, there's a Mogai. I'm going to try to stay away from it. I don't think I can deal with a Mogai right now. Not in this shuttle. 
Let's just get to the door and get out of here. That Mogai, I'm going to ignore it. I cannot take it on with this shuttle. Warning. Ship is under attack. Let's run. I'm serious. Run. <laughs> Shields failing. Right shields failing. Rear shields failing. Hull integrity below 75%. Hey, I got that one. Warning. Ship is under attack. Ow. All right, well, I am making progress out of here. We're coming up on the last room after this area. Just gotta avoid these electrical things. And we're in the last room. All right, now we just gotta get to the door and it looks like there's an enemy by the door, great. It's probably a Mogai. My shield strength is very low. I doubt I can take this thing on. Uh, no, it's a Tavaro. I might be able to take a Tavaro out. That Mo guy was going to be trouble. Just Tavaro I might be able to. Let's try it. Get closer. I'm going to engage all my stuff. Warning. Ship is under attack. That's all I got. Yep, I got it. I got it, Tavaro. I'm surprised, but uh, cool. That worked. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Escape. Yes, exit station. Sir, we must stop Obasek's ship from ab um, absconding with Thaleron weapons. We can use the dormant Romulan subspace booster satellite outside the station to send a message to Starfleet as soon as we're closer to the to, of the interior, but Obasek's like warship will almost certainly detect us when we do. We'll have to survive long enough for reinforcements to show up. Oh, great. Survive in a shuttle. Reinforcements have arrived and are just past that nebula. We don't have much time. We need to meet with the reinforcements and stop that ship. Uh, I guess those are my reinforcements. Let's go toward them, not the Romulan ship. Come on, USA... USS Lahasa. Let's do this thing. You're a galaxy class starship. Protect me. Warning. Ship is under attack. I guess I gotta take out the scorpions. Whoa. Can I stop those plasma? No, I can't. I tried to stop those torpedoes, but it didn't work. Cool. Look at all that damage they're doing to that uh, to Daredex. Did we do it? I think we did it. That was kind of successful. That was quite an explosion, probably from the Thaleron weapons carried aboard the ship. We're going to leave the system under high warp to draw, draw off any reinforcements that might come looking. Suggest you return to Federation space. Leave the system and return to Starbase 39. Yeah, let's get out of here. All right, first shuttle mission successful. And I didn't even blow up. I'm surprised. Okay, we need to go back to Starbase 39 now. 
to finish this mission off. So that, that wasn't too bad. That was not too bad. Our first shuttle mission and a Type 8 shuttle, no less. One of the worst ones. And that wasn't too bad. The only thing is that this shuttle just doesn't have bridge officer abilities, right? There's nothing to buff or boost your 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 phaser damage or your weapon damage or anything like that based on, you know, bridge officer powers. Um, all you have is pretty much whatever captain powers you have, tactical science or engineering, and that's it. So kind of a ship with no options. All right, again, I'm going to pause the video because this is going to take a long time to get back to Starbase 39, and I will resume it once we get back to the station. Okay, welcome back everybody. Here we are approaching Starbase 39. So we can end this mission. And get back into our Defiant. Okay, we need to debrief with DeSoto. I've taken a preliminary look at your logs, and it seems that things weren't, went a bit unexpectedly. I have a feeling that this isn't the last time we'll be seeing the vault. The Riemann commander you encountered is definitely a major player in the dis disintegration of the Romulan Star Empire. I'm going to send the information you gathered about him over to an old colleague of mine, Dr. Maximilian Peters, for analysis. If this Riemann is a leader in their separatist movement, we'll have to deal with him again. And hopefully Dr. Peters can work up a psychological profile for him and a sociological analysis of the separatists. Our next step will be to decode the signal intelligence and go through any remnants left from the ship that was destroyed near the vault. Now that we know that the Remans were hoping to use Thaleron weapons, we need to figure out their target location. Right now, Starfleet knows far too little about a, about an, a civil war in the making, but it will take time to, to sift through all the data. Keep in touch. Starfleet will notify you when we have a lead. Oh, and thanks for the good work, Captain. Return to Admiral Tenay. Okay, on this one, we... Well, she's right here, so we can just talk to her. Excellent work. We need to learn more about the conflict between Obasek and the Romulans. Sela's forces may indeed be hounding the Remans, but the use of Thaleron weapons is unacceptable. Not even the Klingons or the Breen will stoop to such barbarism. Starfleet Intelligence will be working to decode the list of possible targets you acquired from the base's databanks. The next step may be to investigate these sites and find out why the Remans want to destroy them. Okay. And we're going to get a set of scorpion fighters. We can equip these and use these. You'll all uh, use them in combat in the future, and you can see. Uh, they do run out, though. They are consumed on use, but uh, I will use them, and we can see what they're like for a little bit. Congratulations, Captain. Now, note, I get a Captain ability, rank 2. So, as per usual, go immediately to here and find out what that was. Uh, we're at level 35 now. So what's our set two ability then? Security escort tactical? I guess so. So that means we should have a ground ability now called uh, security escort on ground. I need to now expand my hotbar because I got so many things going on here. But we now have this ability here which is new. I need to kind of rearrange this better. But this is the new ability we just got. It's called Security Escort. Is that right? Is that the one we just got? Security Escort? Yeah, Security Escort. Okay. Um, so Security Escort targets myself. It beams down two level 36 Security Escort crew to help you on ground combat. So I can launch it in here just to show you what it looks like real quick. This is our new ability. We'll uh, do it right here. Bada bing. I have now two security escorts that will come with me on the ground, or I call them when I'm on the ground, and they will help fight. They have phasers and they will fight with me. So I can't show you the combat, obviously, with them, but 
when we are in combat, I will call them and show you. Basically, it's a support team, and it provides more damage on the ground for yourself. So, security team is good. It also they also ask act as like bait. They um they take the heat off of you. You know they have that aggressive or whatever. So they're um or that threaten I should say there they have a uh, they take the threat generation off of you a little bit onto them which is nice uh, so that is a good tactical ability it's often used a lot in STFs especially when you have a lot going on it just really helps take the heat off of you like I said and this goes all the way up to security escort level three I believe so this will scale up as we continue to level up so that is very cool. That's our new tactical ability. Very useful as a tactical captain. So just note that. Uh, we've got a new officer as well. We can choose a Betazoid Engineering, a Ferengi Science, or a Vulcan Tactical. Honestly, I don't need any of them, but I will just take something. Let's take the tactical officer. Sure, why not? I don't really need him, but I'll just take him anyway and doesn't hurt to just keep collecting things. I am now at level 35, so we are literally halfway to 40 already, and I haven't even used this Defiant very much. But we are now up there, and um, at level 36, we're not going to get anything. We don't get something else until level 37. We do need to go get back in our ship, because we cannot continue, obviously, in this shuttle. We've got to get in our standard ship. So let's do that real quick. And then I'll put the Scorpion fighters on it and show you how you can uh, set that up to launch. Because you also need to make sure you have the button put on your hotbar in space so you can use it. So we'll do the selector and we'll go back to um, little ship here and we'll do active starships. Now that should be active. Now let's go to our inventory and here's the Scorpion fighters right here and we are going to put that in the device slot now all we have to do is put the button on on the hotbar in space and we can launch scorpion fighters to help us in battle for a little bit until they're all used up but that's at least something that we'll have something new there uh, I think I have as much things here as I can have yeah of course we've got some new skills now I'm going to continue. I've, I've started willpower. I at least want to go up to six in willpower. And, uh... I don't know. I'm thinking maybe stealth. Although we don't have a cloak or mask energy signature, so maybe not. Inertial dampeners. I'm going to have to think about where to go next. What I need to figure out is what powers that I'm going to really use long term in terms of tactical powers. For example, I think I will be using Rally Cry a lot. And Tac Initiative and Security Escort for sure. So I'm probably going to use Squad Command powers a lot rather than Special Forces, although I do use Target Optics. And uh, but I'm I'm might not I'm not going to use the stealth module too much or draw fire. I might use ambush. I guess I'll wait to figure out which ones I'm going to stick with. I think those squad command is probably where I'm going to go next. We'll just accept that for now. Willpower, by the way, is a resistance to um, hold, stun, disable, root, slow, placate, confuse, knock, and repel. That's going to come real in handy when we get to the Borg stuff, and especially doing Borg STFs. Willpower uh, really helps there. Um, I'm going to wait on the rest of the skill points until I think about this a little more, where to put them next. I really need to think about the ground powers I'm going to be using in the future. What's advanced tactics? That is suppressing fire, fire on my mark, and overwatch. I'm definitely going to use fire on my mark. So I think squad command and, and advanced tactics are probably where I'm going to move for the ground stuff. But I'm not sure about the space stuff yet. We'll just wait. Because like I said, I'm not sure that I'm actually going to get a chance to change these skill points in the future. So I need to think about it. Let's go into space and just make sure everything is back to normal. 
I always worry that it's gonna mess up my hot bar, and this time it did not, thank goodness. So everything is there just as I had it. Um, what is that? Oh yeah, abandoned ship. I don't really want abandoned ship though. I don't know why I did that. I'm not gonna use abandoned ship. Um Just let me make sure I got everything else on here. Let's put the Scorpion fighter on here. There we go. I can launch scorpion fighters. I've got 50 of them. So it'll launch. How many does it launch? Six max? Launches, no, it launches three. Six max. So if you do it twice, you get six max. So it's going to launch three, and then I'm out, you know, three. And it's just going to keep going all the way down until I'm totally out of scorpion fighters. So you get to use it a certain amount of point at times, and then you're totally out of scorpion fighters. You have to replay the vault again to get more scorpion fighters until you get to the Romulan reput uh, reputation, then you can actually buy permanent um, scorpion fighters. But anyway, I'll show you that in battle as needed. That'll just help add to my firepower a little bit. And everything else is still as it was, so we're very good on all that. Okay, I'm back finally to having a good ship, and I cannot wait to uh, try this ship in battle now that I got those turrets on there. But we're not going to be able to do that till the next mission, which is called Mine Enemy. So, thank you all for watching The Vault. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for the next one.